5 to begin. Welcome everyone. First meeting of October. This is the 7th. Um, three trustees, Ms. Flopson, Fire Chief, Inspector General, uh, Road Administrator. Let's see. Let, where I put Adam Tannen in? Oh, um, and the press. And the press is now. All right. The fifth, fifth estate. Entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of September 16th, 2019. I so move. I'll second. Any further discussion regarding those minutes? There are a couple of very small, minor. Boo boos. Boo boos. Yes. Uh, may we vote, please? Uh, Mr. Hoster? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. I now entertain a motion to pay bills in the amount of $43,714. And nine cents. Broken uh, general fund fifty one twenty five seventeen. Fire fund twenty six thousand nine hundred five dollars eighty six cents. Cemetery three hundred sixty three dollars even. EMS building six thousand six hundred forty one dollars forty five cents. Road and bridge two thousand seven hundred twenty four dollars and seventy four cents. And capital projects zero. And for anyone's information, this will be probably the last <laughs> meeting that capital projects will have a zero. Well, there may be a zero, but there's going to be a few of them. <laughs> Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. I will second it. Mr. Cross moves. Mr. Hollis will second. Any further discussion regarding payments of these accounts? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Correspondence for the period. Basically, a uh, proposal from Bowser Moore for our uh, environmental site study for this building prior to our sale. Uh, oh, an appraisal for this building prior to our sale, neither of which has been submitted. Um, uh, back to the firehouse, there's a, a um, Report again from Bowser Moore, a uh, pre construction report for the work uh, they will be doing. A message from the uh, Green County Family Violence Prevention, Prevention Center. Um, copies of minutes from the Zoning Commission for um, August, for July and August of, of this year. A uh, newsletter from Green County Council on Aging. It's uh, October, November 19. Uh, League of Women Voter uh, Information, Volume 96. Grassroots Clipping from Ohio Township Association for uh, uh, October 2019. Highlighting the Agritourism Fire Marshal Review. Um, Pipelines from the uh, newsletter from the Green County Environmental uh, Department. Uh, a couple of emails back and forth about regarding the use of the uh, Hermes Street property uh, behind the firehouse. A notice of a uh, public hearing on the 15th for our conditional use reapplication. Um, and the reapplication. And the second part of the reapplication. Another. Uh, notice from uh, Auditor Graham about uh, property value increase on our <laughs> on our firehouse property that's being taxed. I, I haven't heard. But we have a meeting, hopefully, with uh, our attorney about that soon. Um, copy of the Executive Committee report from Regional Planning for last month. The Ohio Deferred Compensation Newsletter for last month. The uh, report from the Green County Public Health of uh, the regular meeting for October 3rd. Sorry, passed. Uh, two interesting handouts from um, regional planning about Dayton's, Dayton's region <laughs> and, and all the good things they're doing. And hope to do some more. Uh, PDAC solicitation from Valley Valley Regional Planning. It's that. Is it? Fund status, revenue status, and appropriation status reports for 10, 17, 19. 
Any other correspondence this evening? Hearing none, we'll move on to the fire department. All right. <coughs> What's the last board meeting? There have been 53 EMS incidents, 20 fire, and it was on four fire safety inspections. Um, I have two volunteer applications for your approval. <coughs> Some women. Oh, that was easy. Awesome. Hey, we women said get away. <laughs> um, got two, Garrett Riley of Fairborn, who is a firefighter EMT already, which is always nice. Mm -hmm. And the son of retired Fairborn Fire Chief Mike Riley. Um, and then Benjamin Timister, 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 who is an AX student. Uh, but is un uncertified. But he really wants to be an EMT, so he's a very good kid. And that's separate from the co op that he would pending. He will. He's the one who was interested in the Yeah, co op. Yeah, co -op. So, you know, winter. In the winter. In the winter. Can he get to a class? Uh, he has a car. There we go. Yeah, which is perfect. Mm -hmm. So I'm just waiting to hear back from Premier Health to see if they're off offering one of their EMT classes in the winter, which would be perfect because their price is very correct. <laughs> I like that. So, so why? So yeah, these two should both work out well. So that's resolution 2019-39. Is there a uh, motion to approve resolution 2939? Uh, yes, I'll make that Mr. Crockett moves into a second. I'll second it. I'll just second. Any further discussion regarding adoption of resolution 2939? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Did I have 19? Sorry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 10 years since I had my time. <laughs> Okay. Okay. He saw the look, I'm like... <laughs> yeah, I saw the look. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll strike that from the list. <laughs> I did. Okay. Uh, just for your information, uh, Medicaid 2, the newer of the two ambulances, mm -hmm. we're having some problems with that type of ride system in the back. Um, we come in and it's listing. This is the same problem we had last meeting? Yeah, yeah just checking. It just keeps going. Yeah. Uh, the valves have been replaced now. The isolation valves have been replaced, I think, three or four times now. Um, the company that makes the, comp the thing, Liquid Spring, um, and this is a system that's been out for years, and it's not like we've got some experimental thing. Um, contacted Demons today because David called them after the last time and said, WTF. Um, they said they feel there is contamination in the system that is causing these valves to stick. They don't know how much she thinks that's true, but at this point we gotta do something because we can't keep having a listing ambulance that guys are getting ready to push it over the edge. So um, do you have any idea what the liquid is that they use in there? It's a proprietary hydraulic tool. Of course it is. <laughs> yeah. Vegetable oil. <laughs> it's some kind of rare exotic olive oil, I think, for what they're charging for it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But I don't know. Basically, we got to replace the reservoir and the fluid, Fl well, flush everything out, replace these filter screens. So, um, and they say that'll fix it. So I authorized David to go ahead and do that. He ordered the parts, and uh, so if it doesn't fix it, yeah, then what happens? I'm driving it to Liquid Spring, wherever they are, and I'm gonna leave it there and figure it out. <laughs> That's pretty much where we're up to it now, because you know, Liquid Spring is saying that it's contaminated. But not how it got contaminated. Yeah, they said they're blaming Evans. Either Evans or the manufacturer. Well, the manufacturer, that was two, three years ago, so there's no way I can go back and be like, hey, did you guys sprinkle dirt in the hydraulic system? Um, I'm pretty sure they haven't done that because every time they, I mean, they haven't even touched it except to replace these valves, and it's just, that's down, down system. Are you so. documenting? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got it on. And the contact. Yep. So. You said this. So that's FYI. Uh, another FYI, uh, there's an email in here that Danny sent just for your information in case you have any questions about. You may have noticed uh, a little bit of construction going on at Nipper's Corner. <laughs> just a little. Uh, most of that had nothing to do with us. So that's mm -hmm. good. They were replacing a storm sewer for the village. But then um, whilst doing that, they encountered uh, what's known as an orphan underground storage tank. Uh, so Johnny from Public Works contacted Danny and he went over. The tank smelled like gasoline, so he had to stop work order and they had to get a contractor to come in and remove the tank. Um, while they were removing that tank the next day, they discovered a second tank. 
Um, preliminarily, it looks like there was no soil contamination, so that's that's the good news for everybody, the environment, and for Dennis and Jane. Um, yep. But they're still waiting on the final lab, you know, lab test to come back, but there are no damp soil or any of the signs that UST inspectors look for. Which I don't know all of you, because I'm not even going to see But there it is. Um, but he said, uh, the tanks were intact. Uh, the second tank they thought was a motor oil tank and not a gasoline tank, so that's good. Um, and he said, you know, the Zephyrs were extremely cooperative throughout the entire process, so it worked out pretty well. So at this point, the tanks have been removed and they're just waiting for the... They're waiting on the soil tank. Being able to backfill or have to dig more? They've already backfilled. Oh, they already have. Yeah, everything's backfilled, closed yeah. up. Um, and uh, the only fear is if there's contamination, of course, they have to deal with that. But they have to dig everything up and they just reseal it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But they're pretty certain that there's no contamination, which is good. That's a good thing. So. Yeah, just, yeah. There's no rust on the outside of the tank. <laughs> the they were just all encased. I mean, no one knows. I mean, Dennis and Jane had no idea that those tanks were even there because they're not even close to where the current tanks are. Yeah. Uh, and all the current tanks were upgraded 15 plus years ago. Well, whenever we pulled ours here. Mm -hmm. so that's you know, 20, 25 years ago, yeah. um, to have leak detection in the whole nine yards. Um, so those, I mean, who knows how long those have been there for. Mm -hmm. It's a very common problem, unfortunately, that someone sells property, neglects to say, oh, we have all the water, there are tanks there. Mm -hmm. And then someone else downstream finds it and has to do it. So. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but hopefully it'll all work out for the members. Uh, flu shots, just an update on this one. We've used Mercy Occupational Health for years to give our guys flu shots because we require they have to have a flu shot. It's required to go into the hospitals anyway. Uh, Mercy notified us at the last minute that they are unable to do our flu shots this year <laughs> because of a reorganization at Mercy. Hmm. Um, so we're re we've reached out to Kettering Premier to see if one of them can do that for us, but it's a little late, unfortunately, in the ordering season uh, for that. So if we can't get one of them to come on site and do it, then um, people who don't have, you know, a lot of insurance covers the entire cost of a, of a flu shot. Some people may not have that good of insurance. Some may not have insurance at all. We'll have to reimburse people since we require them to have it. But I'm hoping most people get it on their insurance. So. Yeah, I'll hold down the credit. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just get a bus and take them home. Well, there is a bus that comes through every two hours. Oh, that's right. There you go. <laughs> Um, Mercy, uh, Mercy assures us that they will be back in that business next year. They uh, they moved, they being the corporate, Mercy moved occupational health from their location on High Street in Springfield by the old community hospital mm -hmm. to the old Mercy Medical Center campus mm -hmm. and mixed them in with a walk-in clinic. Yeah. And apparently that has caused massive mayhem and mm -hmm. staff were reassigned to this clinic instead of doing, you know, stuff for occupational health. Mm -hmm. So they never actually even ordered uh, the flu shots this year. So apparently someone at Mercy didn't understand that that's what occupational health does. That was very efficient. So. Did I understand perfectly nice that, that <laughs> okay. Mercy is also building a new complex in near Enon? Mercy has opened a freestanding emergency room in uh, Freestand. at the corner of 675. Oh, so only an emergency Dayton room. Square. It has some outpatient stuff as well. And I think sports medicine is in there. So. so will that will you transport ever to there or we will have to figure that out. We as a rule we, we don't typically I mean it's not any really in our area, this is the first one in our area. Jamestown has a freestanding ER for premier. Mm -hmm. Our philosophy has been, you know, if you need an ambulance to take you to the hospital, you need to go to a hospital, not <laughs> a freestanding ER that if it's really serious, they're gonna have to put you in another ambulance and bill you for that it. to take you to Miami Valley or mm -hmm. you know, it seems like the location is due to like all that there's you know it's constantly stuff going on on 70 and yeah four, it's you know, around all, Eden, they don't you know for, it's all a crazy Eden marketing thing, right? thing they're trying to get as part of the insane mm -hmm. panels I, think. I mean that's my humble opinion between okay. all these health systems right um so we haven't actually been first yeah i mean they haven't been they've been open since october 1st but we haven't seen anything through greater Miami valley mass council about how to like get in touch with them like what their phone number is um <laughs> Assuming, I mean, we only have, I mean, last year we only went to Mercy and Springfield 38 times, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the vast majority of our people go to our care and health patients, so I don't see them wanting to go there. There could be some people from Bath Township who want yeah. to go. Um, and given some of the wait times that 
happen in Mercy at Spring Springfield, then we may we may do that. Maybe you know, if they're not someone who looks like it's serious. But you guys want to make that determination. Mm -hmm. The freestanding ER is in theory, I mean they can do everything a real ER can do. But I wouldn't take chest pains there. I mean, you have you know, two hospitals that can handle that, that. Yeah, move you into the intensive right. care or yeah. something. Yeah, I mean serious calls will still in my mind have to go to a real hospital. That's because it's it's not. And then, you know, your patient then gets our ambulance bill to go there. Mm -hmm. And then whatever health network bills them to take them to their other hospital. And, and then if you don't want to go to a Mercy hospital, but you want to go to Kettering or Premier, then Lord knows what will happen. I mean, you get there. Yeah. Sure you so who knows? So we'll have to figure that one out. Okay. We were kind of hoping we could, you know, dodge that one and not have one in our neck of the woods, and then <laughs> Mercy wouldn't open that one. So. <laughs> uh, and then last but not least, I forgot to put it on there, but you may not... You may not be aware of this, but there's this thing coming up street fair on Saturday. Um, working with the police department, we've, uh, in public works, um, a lot of safety and security enhancements that have been made for this one. Mm -hmm. Well, and going forward. That's good. Um, we'll Will following. there be barriers? Yes. So a car could not just zip. That is the plan. So you should, most of the stuff will not be visible, but a lot of the stuff will be. Um, and hopefully, that, you know, better position us to respond to God forbid something horrible happens. Like, you know, or something, so. So that, that's the safety you're dealing with is, is assaults. Yeah, I mean, there's also always a threat. I mean, one of the bigger threats to an event on the street is the case of the older gentleman or woman who falls asleep or has a heart attack while they're driving and they creen into the crowd. Mm. Um, concrete crash barriers help mm. with that. But the bigger threat now is what they're calling now active threat. So someone with a gun mm. or someone doing something Intention. stupid. Um, so there'll be an enhanced, I mean, I think people will notice an enhanced Law enforcement presence during street fair, mm -hmm. um, which is long over here. And uh, I think we have 20 guys working that day, so we'll be ready. All right. And that's it. Hopefully, right. just to have a good time and nothing else. Yes, I hope so. Keeping away free water. Uh, I'm not sure what the association is planning. I have to talk to Brett and see if they're planning on doing that or not. Um, I'm not urging it, I'm just we always have. trying to comment. Well, we actually do something. So yeah, we'll see. And other than that, we're just all excited to see all the earth being moved over at the park. Mm -hmm. So it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else for the chief? Okay, then we'll move, move to... I do want to quickly thank Dan. He's helped us out several times in the last two weeks with the building and vehicle maintenance mm -hmm. issues that have come up. So got our generator running on the rescue truck and mm -hmm. let us close our back door. <laughs> So, thank you, Dan. You're welcome. What was up with the generator? Uh, choke was engaged. Mm -hmm. Choke off the camera. Yeah. Or, 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 or. I, I was told it was still running fine all weekend, and it's good. <laughs> so, I feel messy. How did the uh, event out at Mercy Hospital go? Did you had an open house for? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, back down. Sure. Yeah. Have I seen you guys since then? Cool. It went very well, I thought. Um, Maybe we you had, have, but I We had about 50 it. people attend. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone seemed happy. Um, we'll definitely, and people want us to do it again in the future, which was nice. Um, we'll have to find a better way to advertise it in the future for, since we learned that you're not allowed to drive around and put flyers mm -hmm. in or around someone's mm -hmm. mailbox without mailing them. Um, so I have a mailing list from the trustees from Beth Township, but for all their residents. 50 is a pretty good turnout. Well, that was a pretty good turnout. Um, everyone enjoyed their hot dogs and fire engine rides, and it's a good time for all, I think. So they want us to come back, so that's a good thing. You know, that reminds me, um, I've, I've been trying to think of uh, when we last did anything. We haven't done much public, at least here. Um, no, we've Not got many hot dogs. And no, we've got something coming up though this month here. here. We do. Um, yeah, coming the day. I think it's coordinating with. Uh, not coordinating, but it's during the. I think it's the third Friday, art stroll or mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. that the yep. chamber's doing. Uh, we just gotta get the okay to set up the neighbors because we've done it there and all this before, and that we don't have to worry about someone falling in that pit and <laughs> break an ankle. Well, that'd be good. Uh, I don't mean the falling, yeah. but doing something. Um, I know in the past we've had
had spotty <laughs> records with you know it's it's the snowing the autumn edition yeah. yeah the ice cream wasn't going very very well but yeah. you know you take, I don't know maybe is there something we could do indoors somewhere I don't know probably I mean Jason and I talked about this the third Friday here and you know, watching the weather and plotting what we do better you know if it's going to be cold maybe not ice cream hot dogs always go well people love hot dogs we've done a half hot cider too and we did the one um, Sundays one year a really big Sundays on a warm donut like a scoop of vanilla ice cream on like a, a heated up uh, Krispy Kreme mm -hmm. yeah. that seemed to go very well <laughs> and that wasn't weather dependent people wanted that very much, so. um, but Nate and I have talked about also doing some more events in the next year as you know, we'll have an operating movie coming up or mm -hmm. whatever. So just getting our faces out there. We've got Smart good old Halloween coming up too. Yeah, we'll be out for Halloween, throwing yeah. candy at children and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Here and in Clifton and in parts of Mount as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, Steve wasn't sure. <laughs> I don't know if we do trick or treating. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't think we do, but you may want to uh, just take a quick spin to the country club estates there next to the old country club. Mm -hmm. Like the very one, they probably do. Yes. Okay, well, that's easy. <laughs> All right, we're good. That's good to hear. Anything else from the fire department? Well, I think the new fire department report is fairly self explanatory. <laughs> All you do is drive down the street. Although you probably would um, mistake the the pipe <laughs> pipe replacement <laughs> yeah. for most of uh, uh, most of firehouse work at least <laughs> for the next couple of days. But we hope to get some done um, briefly. Yes, they started last weekend. Uh, they will sporadically work during the week. They are actually not that far off from where they need to be to get ready for the geo piers to go in. Geo peers, geo peers are not scheduled until the 15th. Um, that's the last How do you spell geo peers? I mean, what is that? G-I-E-R-S. G-O-P-I-E-R. G-E-O. 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 It's actually a trade name. Oh, okay. And they're using it generically, like Kleenex. Okay. Then after the peers are in, they'll come back and put additional soil on top of this on top of those and then contour the pad to the dimensions that they need for the draining of it and then start digging the foundation um, which they have tentatively scheduled for the last week in october i believe i think that's the thing so that would be great now of course this is all weather dependent but so far yeah done pretty well in two days, anyway. Mm -hmm. Two days of good weather. And the rest of this week is supposed to be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, even Saturday is, uh, they have rain on here, but weather service says it's less than 30% chance. Is that right? All right. So, um, mm -hmm. I don't know what else to update about that. Do they well, they did did distribute the flyers in the neighborhood. Oh, no. Do tell. Dan wonders where they were going to take all that they dirt. They're going to take all that dirt. Nope. Some of it goes back. They're going to use some, I'm sure, but yeah. they won't use all of that. I, I don't know. I talked to them. You know, they were preparing it to do the geopiers, and then, as Chris said, there's more grading that goes on, and and whether that uses up more that's there, I don't. And then the foundation gets dug, and that'll make the. I know those piles are going to get bigger and smaller quite a right. few times before they know what's left. And partly, I understand that it depends on what they find when the. They could come up with a quality of dirt that they don't want on the site. Well, right. Why do you have a place to put? I just wonder if you <laughs> get rid of so much from the stockpiles. It's pretty crappy dirt. I mean, it's got a lot of. Oh, it is. It's got a lot of stone. It's, it. it's stone. It's, it's the fill mostly. It's better for fill dirt or something. Like that. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, most of the area that they've scraped off is the area that had the building. Mm -hmm. And so it's all the, the, not pit run exactly, but yes. along those lines. And they brought in there. how many dump truck loads? Uh, Something like nine or more? Yeah, well, probably around that. That's, I mean, 
where they knew what the quality of the dirt was, and that came, I understand, from excavation for Cresto. Mm -hmm. And so that was a good was, deal. That was uh, field field dirt. You know, nothing had ever been on that. Mm -hmm. So that was, and they had tested it all before they approached the village about using it. The village was happy to oblige. They they had no use for it, at least at the moment. You know, obviously somebody might be wanting to build a tower. Or anything like that. So tell us what you did Saturday. <coughs> what I did? Yeah. Did you do Saturday afternoon? I already said we distributed flyers. That was it. And talk to people. Mm -hmm. Yes, and talk to people <laughs> and, got, and got a good response from people. Yes, and you did this too. Well, I got a good response from people too. <laughs> uh, yeah, t neighbors. Uh, hmm? Interested in say? progress. One, one. Uh, I mean, here I'm. I'm primed to you know get noise complaints or whatever. One Most guy said, are coming from the Miller pipeline, and they're, they're sheets of steel that go, come on, come on. Every time. One, one guy said, well, my, son, my, my son's already watching out of the second story window, and he's delighted to, to wash the trucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so you, you, I'm sorry, but I, I, you just threw flyers in the neighborhood of where the new construction is Marshall and Herman okay. Streets, yes. All right, thanks. And across uh, the departments across Senior Avenue. Mm -hmm. Well, so tell the viewing public what the flyer said. In case perhaps there's somebody ah. who's viewing that <coughs> it lost their flyer. The <laughs> village, village noise ordinance uh, allows construction between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. Oh. on weekdays and Saturday, and 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. on Sunday. It is not the intention of the contractors to operate basically past dark, but there may be some times. Uh, if there's noise after the 10 p.m., call us right away and you could call my number, 937-860-6151. And that's what we said on the flyer. And that also there may be... <laughs> You know, mud, there may be other traffic issues, parking, uh, and let us know. Um, they're, the contractors are negotiating with Home Inc. about using the existing hardscape, that is the old parking lot, uh, it's not really ours, it's uh, using that for staging and for parking equipment, but right now all the equipment is parked inside the Munster on Township land. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else about the new firehouse? Anything, Mark? No. All righty, let's move to the Cemetery Road Report. Sexton Gokenauer. I am here. <laughs> thank you, all three of you, for letting me have time off. <laughs> you did. That's you. <laughs> now, I wasn't at the last meeting, but since the last meeting I attended, we've had four burials, two in Clifton, two in Mentors. Uh, we're going to have another one soon, but I don't know where we go. Uh, Brandon conducted one while you were gone, is that's that one. And uh, He conducted two, one here and one Oh, that's right, one Clifton, too. And he went fine for him? Oh, yeah. He got really good job. Got the whole way everything, took care of business. Mm -hmm. uh, I filled confidence. it. I had confidence in him. Mm -hmm. Filled it up all right? Yep. Got it. Looks just fine. Mm -hmm. Great. Got a good job. We count on him pretty good. Mm -hmm. He's come around pretty good. Yeah. Our graveyard repair guys are here mm -hmm. working on stones diligently. Mm -hmm. So I marked out a bunch. I talked to the wall. We walked around a little bit. I said, if you run out of flags, he said, I'll just find some more to do mm -hmm. while they're here. Yeah. Uh, so in. will they be, they be out in the next day? They'll be two? here till Friday. They'll work uh, probably till one or so Friday. Pack up here. So they're not staying for street fair? They were going to, but they're not. So they can't reach Are they for cemeteries? This is good. For the yeah, their plan was to stay, but something came up. Yeah. I think the last time they were here, we had somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 headstones. Um, Either repaired, replaced. 
Oh, well, re yeah. Reset? I don't think so. No. I know he done some pre. Yeah, some of them were pretty hard ones. Right. As I and he's got he's got a half a dozen like that now. So. Yeah. Uh, is he going to reset those ones in the front? You know, they look like they could just be plopped right back up. The three section ones. It was two or three up by a fair field of pipe. Yes. Yeah, we marked section. The division. one's been laying down for a long yeah. time. Yeah, mm -hmm. we looked at that. And yeah. Anything else he's seen, I said, it's laying down, you need to fix. Yeah, okay. So is his wife and, and no. helper there? No. no, he has two new helpers. So we don't have to know the guys, but they got right on. They've been busy all day. Yeah. They fixed up several of them already. Yeah. So. Is it appropriate for me to stop by sure. and watch? Sure. I think I'd learn anything? <laughs> <coughs> Alt's a pretty good guy, knowledgeable. He's really good at what he does. Mm -hmm. do, do most stones that are flopped over flop over because they just, you know, not buried deep enough or are they broken? Well, if they're in a base, in a slot, mm -hmm. like they said, yeah, a lot of times they break. But some of them just fall over, they don't have anything around them. But most of the ones that have a base are broken. So you have to do some kind of a repair or you he just does. shorten it? He does. He, well, Depending, he'll cut them off level if he has to and put them back in the slot. So they might be a couple inches shorter, but never interferes with the Yeah, lettering. the reading. Yeah. If he can fix it, he will, and he'll re-letter and we can be mm -hmm. pretty tough. So, yeah, they're going to be all right. You know, the one stone that we saw literally just sunk straight down. He'll go level in one of them. Okay. Anything we need. Uh, and we're going to try to get our bases in starting next week. Mm -hmm. Five and five, five and six and five over here. No, they don't. You know, yeah. those government markers. Down. I have three. Pretty. Clifton. Mm -hmm. Everything else over here is installed. Mm -hmm. I had one for Dune and they put it on stone mm -hmm. last week. Mm -hmm. While I was gone or something. Yeah. While I was gone, I called Brandon. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we got it and gave it to him. So the three that are at the building go. Mm -hmm. okay. Those are all the list to put in the mm -hmm. And uh, they still haven't chip sealed yet. I'm sure they will. They haven't fog sealed either. <laughs> I hope they do. They didn't fall last year. I thought they did it late. They didn't, no, they didn't fall for us last year. So nope. we were getting them this year, and we added swimming pool, and we get the same oh, prices right. last year. That's right. I not yet. We'll get them this week. I'll call them and find out where they're Yeah, because they, they don't have any excuses like there hasn't been any bad weather. I know. I know. We'll find out. Any interesting there for me? No. Those old roads. The roads are good. Yeah. Trimming's good. Mm -hmm. You think? Have you seen it? Yeah. Only thing I've left is the Nell Circle. I'll get that. Yeah. I looked at most of them yesterday. The only thing I saw, was, and it's, a, it's so late and everything, but it seemed like there was a pretty good chunk of South River and actually North River that actually could use to be mowed. Oh, they'll be mowed. They have been mowed. Been mowed. Okay. Warrants, the one path. Yeah. Yeah, that's the two. Uh, South River and Kyle are the only two I haven't completely loaded yet, which we don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Kyle, I'm so, I'm yeah. Not, yeah, I don't yeah. mean North River. Those are the two that we haven't completely loaded. Yeah. It's on the list. We're going to take care of it this week. I wasn't sure I if, you, if you left those to grow to, to no. hold back the snow or anything. No, no. <laughs> uh, a little bit you know, once the crops are off, we'll get everything because I like to knock the corn stalks back. Mm -hmm. It's very mm -hmm. it helps prevent it. No, that's Okay. Yeah, but other than that, um, everything I saw looked nicely trimmed um, pretty far back. I mean, you were... You I were, took it back, so... You were down into bark. Sometimes. <laughs> it happens. He must have had extra ear plugs in. That <laughs> well, week. you try to avoid that, but sometimes you can't. You can try it sometimes, you want. Know. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, the village wants some trimming done. And, uh, at the water plant, at the sewer. Mm -hmm. 
and I can get the other one. When we were pressing. Did you trim all the way? Did you trim all the way down High Road? Their part to I trimmed, Cornell. Yeah, I trimmed it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't too bad. I just kind of dressed it up a little bit. Always do because they don't. You know, we mow it every day. Yeah. So is this the work we do for the village? Is sort of informal reciprocity or mm -hmm. trade? Help each other out. Yeah. They help us. We help them. And the same with the Xenia on Snively. Oh, we have a part of Snively. Is it sideways part of ours? Uh -uh. No. Sutton? No. I thought we had like 700 foot on by the bean farm. It's, it's all straight along the section lines, so it doesn't... Because I never mowed there. I mean, they, they mowed, yeah. but it needs trimmed really bad. Really bad. So they would like to do that. It's not ours. It's not ours. Yeah. Oh. I thought part of the time it was over. Being far is the driveway, that's, that's in my township. The part of it, like 700 foot on the north side of the road is ours, I believe. It, it's in the township, but it's not our road. Right, I think the road is just north of the road, so the road's not ours, yeah. Okay. We're not the house, because we've been there for mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> for the kind of things we do. <laughs> stuff. That stuff. I can't tell you about. No. <laughs> Which is probably for the best. <laughs> I think that's about it. I mean, Guy never gave it to it. It's, it's never been on any of well, our that was the question first. with the tree issue out there. You know, that was yeah, supposed to be ours. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know anything because it's out of the, our runway or the right way of the road. Yeah. Yeah, that's not an issue of whose road it is. That's an issue of where the property line is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What else? Anything? No, I think so. Good. Yeah. Anything else for uh, road administrator? Did you ever check that culvert? Or? No, I didn't. No, the, uh, Smith. Smith. They dressed it up real nice and everything. <laughs> I need to, I have, I still have the note sitting there, but I haven't gone out that way. I should do that. Maybe we'll bump that up on the list. Well, how about fiscal officer report for the evening? could be something It's very exciting. <laughs> yes, as usual. Comments from the peanut gallery. <laughs> we have... <laughs> Uh, resolution 2019-38, amendment of a permanent appropriation. <clears throat> Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township, now therefore the trustees authorize an amendment to the following permanent appropriation. And that would be increase the Social Security expenditure line item and the fire fund by $1,100. The township trustees authorize the fiscal officer to do so immediately. Is there a motion to adopt the 2019-38? I so move. I second that. Move and second. Are there any further discussion regarding that? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Uh, for no particular reason other than general knowledge. Go away, bug. Um, I did learn that the uh, village will be Putting on the ballot in the spring a um, renewal for an operating well. Oh, we have another one. So we'll be uh, we'll be having levies of uh, plenty. Have, have you made a decision on when you want to uh, put the fire <coughs> departments? Yeah, in March. In, March. The March appointment. So what's the deadline for filling out the? Mm -hmm. you know, well, paperwork's in It's like January 9th or something. I think to be on the what is December for candidates to file. It's the uh, first week of December. Oh. December? Yeah. Or second week. Yeah, well, that would be ours too. So we'll have to start cranking that up now that <sighs> this is your firehouse. Get rid of these guys. Your dog is an ant. That's not. It's a fine little, <coughs> like a spidey little devil. So now that we've got the firehouse almost under roof, we'll start on some new projects uh, here directly.
So what that's are we up against somewhere? That's going to be up. Huh? The village is doing something? Uh -huh. the school is Not the school. Not, not the school. school. Right. 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 It's a renewal. It's an eight, eight mil renewal, I believe, for the village. Mm -hmm. I'll try to think. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Anything else for the um, you got a new printer. We did. Whether we wanted it or not. <laughs> yeah. is, that, is that the combination? That's the UAN, you know, they supply us with their printer and the, and the computer. Yeah. And um, so it was time to get a new printer. Is that the copy machine, <laughs> fax machine, combination machine? I went for the basic, basic. You didn't go for the, for the big guy? I thought we had this conversation. Yeah, we did. Well, I guess I misunderstood. <laughs> Your, your, your feelings on it. Well, I wasn't part of this conversation. Well, I just thought, well, because Although we, we have a fax machine. The two. Yeah, I could get like a, a super like bells and whistles fax machine, copy machine, and printer. But Maybe you, even a scanner, too. Well, you already talked about the thing. All the same the copper was, might be on its last legs. We did, but like, I guess we didn't, well, too late. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. I don't well, know. Um, Every man for himself. <laughs> for what it's worth, <laughs> Harvey, your old printer is still working just I fine. I know, I know. I, I expressed that to the state. Oh, well, okay, well, sorry. Okay. Bye. And UAN stands for? Uniform Accounting Network, which is the state auditor's office, um, their program that, you know, they supply all the software for. Any township libraries, cemeteries, public entities that um, you know for their accounting purposes, and that way you know, you know that what you're what you're doing and everything uh, the system accommodates your annual financial reports to the state auditor. So that kind of works hand in hand. And we pay them contractually for their services, and there there's an 800 number to call when. And that's in addition to paying them to audit us. <laughs> True. <laughs> Which I think people should be reminded of, we have to pay for the legally required audit when we have a paid auditor. Right. <laughs> anyway, but we get, you know, a new, a new printer, we could have got a new printer, scanner, <laughs> fax machine, <laughs> oh. but we didn't. <laughs> Moving yeah. on, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's going on? Uh, I don't have any state connections, I'm sorry. Um, oh, I issued one zoning permit since I last saw you, um, which is for a, a residential solar array um, out on State Route 370. And as I probably mentioned at the last meeting, I did um, have a meeting out at Agraria talking about it's a little hard to always see that, that all the activities are falling within the, the zoning code and the sort of the assurance I got was that um, nothing new is happening but probably at the beginning of the year they are going to file for agritourism projects under that that category, so they'll, we'll go through that uh, agritourism process with them. And of course that, there's there's two parts of that. One is, do I think it's agritourism? And if I do, so be it. If I, if I don't, then they would have to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals if they wanted to pursue it. Mm -hmm. um, the other is that we have we, you know, agritourism was an unusual action by the state in so much as they spelled out a whole bunch of rules about zoning that they've never done before. But then they said, you can't regulate this, this, and this. But they said, you can regulate. And ingress and egress is something that we can and, and will look at. Um, setbacks, probably not a big issue in, in that area. Uh, but there are residences adjoining the property, so activities that, that might impact the neighbors and hours of operation in the, in, the, in the same respect. So we will have those things to review. Um, what's coming up um, that, that will take some thought is that they want to have a, I think for lack of a better term, 
commercial composting facility. They want to accept various materials and compost them and sell the compost. And on site. This, I assume on site sales. Yeah, on site, on their site. Um, on, you know, and, and it's it's the whole you know triggers the EPA reviewing and, and everything else. It's a it's a fairly big deal. I don't I don't know any details about where that stands. But that's one of the things that we have to stop and and think through is, is this agriculture or is this a commercial activity? Um, and that one I said, oh, right off the seat of my pants, I, I can't answer that. It, it, to me, it sort of depends on well, what is it that you're taking and, and who is it that you're supplying. You know, if you were accept, you know, when, when a farmer accepts sludge from a sewage treatment plant to fertilize his fields, that's just fine. And it is being composted. But when you have an operation like out on Daniel Springs Road where everybody can take their brush and they chew it all up and, and process it or whatever, and it ends up being topsoil or mulch or whatever, well, that doesn't exactly seem like a farm <laughs> to me. So um, it's going to take a little bit of research to, to think about how that fits in with zoning. And there are other plans, but... Susan said they're out there years, years away, not, not immediately. Do you know what that pretty good size, um, it's not a tent, but whatever that thing is that they've got, they put up in the last couple weeks? Oh, that they're, they're making their own hoop house. Is that what that one yeah, is? Yeah, that's, that's what that is. I, I saw that in the paper and, and sort of saw it out of the corner of my eye when it's there. Uh, they're, I think, without having gone up and looking, looked at it in detail, that they're doing kind of a homemade job. In other words, they didn't buy, you know, the pre-bent steel mm -hmm. rods or, or a, an envelope or anything. They're, you know, putting together with whatever materials they have. A temporary structure, I guess? Uh, well, a hoop house. Is a hoop house temporary <laughs> or not? You have to replace the, the shell every so often yeah. because it, does, it only lasts so long, but, but they're most of the people I know that have them use them indefinitely. Mm -hmm. Antioch Farm has has a hoop house that they've had practically since day one. I thought they were teaching people how to make one, or wasn't there? there well, was a, there was a workshop. It was a workshop, okay. but I don't know what that means. I mean, that means you come and volunteer to help us build one, and you okay. get to see how it's yeah. done. I don't think it was a class to show people how to do it so they could go home and build their own. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Yeah. Well, it was in the paper. Exactly. Yeah, that they were having this event, but I and I saw that, but it didn't, you know, it didn't say, it didn't answer Chris's question when I read the mm -hmm. newspaper. As I say, workshop is kind of a very broad category. I recently went to the uh, Allwood Farm. Mm -hmm. it used to be. A I mean, it's now it's a completely separate facility from what I thought of as Allwood. And it appears to be in a farming area, but it is uh, a facility that has programs and is also available for events. Mm -hmm. And it would be interesting what was the zoning there. Uh, it may be analogous. Yeah, it, it, that's true. It might, it might, might be an interesting lesson. So that's, a, that's west of Dayton. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I know generally. I haven't been out all in a while. Do you remember a while ago, I, I, I cut out a little blurb from, from the newspaper about some event, and I wasn't sure what it was. I, I'm not sure what, <laughs> what it was. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it, the, my interpretation was people were getting together to share uh, ideas, concepts, whatever, about agrarian sorts of things in any format they chose, whether they were doing a, a song or a skit or a, or a dance or, or whatever. So it was kind of, I don't know, I would call it multimedia presentation. Are you saying this was an article that was about an agrarian? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was a little clipping. Mm -hmm. No, I, you know, I, I said to Susan, I've never operated where, you know, most of the things in the zoning aren't black and white. 
you know, or I don't choose to make them black and white, but, you know, you can't make the gray area too, too big at some point, you know, something crosses the line. And I continue to encourage her to run things past me or anybody else in the, in the township before you advertise it, before you go too far. Because the worst thing is to have to go while you're doing something and say, well, I just found out about this and no, that's, you know, it's a zoning violation. I, I, I can't tell if that's sinking in or not. Colin, did you do your tour or your... We're waiting on an opinion from the State Fire Marshal's office about applicability. If someone tells me that they're doing something just like a one-time only in a barn, does it still have to be all the So what's, what's this? The State Fire Marshal's office sent out <coughs> to a, a technical bulletin um, regarding agritourism facilities as they are... This. Mm -hmm. Yes, I assume they're very prevalent now across the state. I guess. Um, and talking particularly about places that do weddings and other events in barns, and that if you are using a barn for an assembly area, i.e. 50 or more people, then it must meet all the requirements that are laid out in the fire code and the building code for an assembly area, meaning exit signs, sprinkler systems, all that kind of stuff. Which I would venture a guess that most barns do not. Um, well, mo most barns don't even have the water supply to have a sprinkler system. Right, exactly. So uh, once we get that opinion, we do have an inspection scheduled at the area for that, and then we'll go out and see what they're doing. And Clementine? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we'll go to Clementine also. And um, the Marshall stress is in there because it's a common misconception that we've encountered that the fire code does not apply to agritourism facilities mm -hmm. because I guess parts of the building code don't. But right. The fire code still does. So. Yeah, there's been a, apparently a lot of misunderstanding because uh, I've been to meetings where, where they've said, you know, the, the owners have told these people, oh, no, we are exempt from, yeah. you know, everything. So what's, what's interesting, and this, this may help explain some of this, when the, the Farm Bureau, who was advocating for agritourism, mm -hmm. in the beginning, the kinds of things they were proposing were things like amusement parks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay? And, really? and, you know, we were all kind of shocked and there was some reaction to that. But when the actual legislation came out, it, it said, you know, it had a list of activities like educational, for example, or, or social. But it all said it had to be agriculturally related. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's <coughs> what we're all interpreting. But it's hard to say that a wedding is agriculturally related. Mm -hmm. But people, because people thought that's what it Right. was happening back in the beginning, there's still of that mindset that, oh, we got agritourism and we can, can do these things. The other is that my understanding with talking with our prosecutor's office that each county at their court level are independent. In other words, if Montgomery County says you can't have a wedding, that doesn't mean that Green County can't do it. It has to go up to an appeal court that right. has a broader area before everybody is bound by it. So we've got a, a long way to go through courts before this gets resolved mm -hmm. if people, you know, are, are stubborn enough, enough about it to go through the court system. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's the challenge. You know, it's interesting to pause and say, Young's is agritourism, all right? And it has very, very little to do with farming, <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, uh, golf? Uh, well, you couldn't go feeding goats to buy a quarter at a time. But that's watch. not the that agriculture that most much. of us think of. But in people's minds, they're going out, out to the farm. So it's it's a tricky one, mm -hmm. yeah. and it, you know it's very popular <coughs> in Norwood to go out to the farm and do something. What people perceive, mm -hmm. we should say maybe go out in the country rather than out to the farm. But that's synonymous to many. Anything else, Richard? No. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, yes, sir. We did go to the zoning commission. Oh, okay, oh, yeah. Um, and you left before the meeting was over. And we, were, we continued the discussion of uh, PUD and I 
the, the commission urged me, and I agreed to bring to uh, to the board of trustees uh, again the issue of in rewriting the PUD section of our uh, zoning resolution. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's not called code, but it's not. Uh, it's their opinion that with the county, uh, the township would be safer to have nothing while it's being rewritten than the current PUD uh, part of the resolution. So I'd like to put that on our radar and talk about. And Richard, can you remind me what is the concern of having that option? Because there, there were arguments at this meeting saying if you have it, if you do have a PUD option, there are uh, two cases in uh, Greene County speaking of the differences between different courts, mm -hmm. uh, where a developer was able to ram through past the township zoning. And that the argument is that with a PUD option, you have a range in, in which to say, hey, we are offering flexibility, but you can't go, can't do what you're talking about. Uh, if, if, yeah, that one, I mean, I would have to learn about what actually well, took place. It's, it's, uh, no, I'm trying to reflect. Yeah, what the, get, what the what, zoning what, commission what was, was the saying. Commission's feelings, not. Yeah, and they had heard that and were mm -hmm. were concerned. I mean, the the reason that, or at least some of the reasoning that the zoning commission has against against the PUD is not that it would by eliminating it it would stop development in the township. Regular subdivision can take place regardless of, of whether we have a PUD or not. Regular subdivision just has to match the underlying zoning of but the township. But it took us six months or a year to develop and approve a new PUD. Okay. Which is why would it not be safer to just drop the old PUD? Okay. Be because the we are so vague in our PUD standards that we, we run the risk of, we say, oh well, we don't have to worry about that because we get to negotiate a PUD. But if we negotiate a PUD and the developer says, you're just pulling things out of the air, you're not following what you've got written down, there's the court case. In other words, you can't, you know, you, you know, I don't, and I don't know, I don't know how the courts look at this, but that's been the issue that I presented, that our PUD would allow some things that we really don't intend it to, to do, I mean, in, in, in concept. And yet, what would be the argument for saying, well, no, that's not what we want, because we didn't say that wasn't what we wanted. Well, at the commission meeting, there was the, sorry, was his title director of regional planning commission? Uh-huh. Yeah. And one of his lead staffers, um, they were not in a position to make a recommendation. I mean, they, I mean, we, mm -hmm. that's not appropriate. Well, it would be appropriate if we formally asked them. But I would like us to pursue this issue. <coughs> I mean, the, the <clears throat> and one way to pursue it may be to ask for a formal, uh, maybe not call it an opinion, but a summary of the arguments. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Township Planning Commission is going to go ahead and work on a new PUD. And the question is, uh, do we cancel PUD until a new one is developed, or do we leave it in the status quo, which is that we have what we got? Well, I, I, I mean, uh, there's a couple ways you can look at that. I mean, we've already talked about canceling it and have decided to, to leave it in place. That's not, I'm not saying you can't re, re, revisit that. 
I would not, I, I would think that if you were talking about canceling it, it would have to go through the same procedure as any other zoning change. You know, yes. It would have yeah. to have a hearing, it would have to go to regional planning, it would have to come back to, to the zoning commission, and it would have to come to us, et cetera, et cetera. That sounds like a lot of work. Or it would be a lot of work at the same time as other work was being done on the new one. Yeah. Um, and we have eliminated the commercial and industrial options within a PUD. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, well, I'll bring it up again next meeting. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I can say that that um, regional planning did send some information to me to distribute to the zoning commission, which they won't have a meeting until November, but I passed pass that along. And we also talked about, um, you know, working with regional planning on, on, on development of, you know, of trying to figure out how do we accomplish what it is that we want to accomplish. But we, there hasn't anything formal happened as far as that's concerned. So the next, <coughs> the next, uh, Planning Commission meeting is going to be after harvest, and that would be yeah. November, the third Tuesday in November. Uh, in other words, October skipped. Well, I feel an obligation to the Planning Commission to more formally consider this, because they, they said they wanted it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll write up a memo summarizing. I'll get something. I'll try to put on paper. Uh, I'll ask around yeah. the commission now, why again do you want to get rid of what we got? Uh, and I'll look again at the wording. Because in the last process, the Regional Planning Commission did make a statement saying keep it. Mm -hmm. uh, let, me, let me say one more time. The reason that the Zoning Commission proposed eliminating the PUD is that regardless of the flexibility that a PUD provides, it's still a tool for development. And the comprehensive plan says we don't want to develop the township. All right? we, if, we, if there's development, it should be adjacent to the municipalities, where higher density building can take place because there's sewer and water. Whereas out in the township, you inevitably use up large quantities of land, which gets taken away from farming, and it um, changes the atmosphere of the township, which, again, the comprehensive plan says we want to keep it the same. Now, maybe that's not truly practical, but the, the point is the, the fewer options there are for building, the more likely things are to not change, as opposed to saying, oh, here's an option, and here's another option, and here's another one. Well, to repeat what we've said before, and I think if, we, if I don't repeat it, it will, on this video, whoever's actually yeah. talking this video, but you hear half the argument, is that there are circumstances in the township where some people might prefer, instead of a, a row of every 300 feet, another lot on this stretch of road, uh, that there be an option that has fewer curb cuts on the road and the same number of lots be in a more compact setting. And then there's open space that perhaps could continue to be farmed, although farmers on the on the commission said that doesn't and work. it's not gonna happen. Uh, uh, and here's here's the 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 ultimate problem. I mean PUDs were created to try to do this trade off where where things were a little nicer and it cost the developer less. All right. It wasn't, it was a, it, PUDs are done by developers to make more money. 
period. <laughs> All right. Second is, so you, let's say instead of putting five houses a, along the road, you put five houses back here in a cluster, and that's successful, and there will be five more houses back here in a cluster, and then there will be five more, and there will be five more. It's, it doesn't stop development. I don't think it's worth my arguing right now. Yeah, well, anyway, that's... that's your example. <laughs> but... Uh, that's that's bring the us issue... Up with something in front of us. Is, is to make it match the comprehensive plan. To make our zoning match our comprehensive plan. That's what then, the then, change it to large lot, to then change it to large lot zoning and, and be, well, the, be the, done with it. The other thing that I didn't understand, <laughs> was surprised by... Uh, the notion that we could, that there could be a provision in the zoning code that would simply limit the number of divisions that an existing plot could have. Mm -hmm. of right, that you couldn't keep doing it over and over and over again. Uh, well, just saying, you know, no, no plot can be divided uh, more than once every 25 years, and it only can be divided in half. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's one of the things that and again the, I'm is the commission going to explore this more? Is 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 are those th those concepts legally enforceable? And if they are, that may be an appropriate tool. The what you what you do have to bear in mind is that in Miami Township, we most farms are made up of a bunch of smaller parcels. They're not big chunks of land. And if every one of those parcels can, gets the choice of still being split, there's still a huge amount of, of available development. Not to belabor this too much longer, I was intrigued. Two of the members of the Zoning Commission had uh, sketches of their farms and how they could develop them under our current set up uh, and, and saying, hey, we have no interest in developing, we're opposing development, we're constantly being asked by friends at you know, church or work, hey, could I have a lot, or, and we just don't have that sentiment, and that we're not alone, that, it, that ultimately it's not what our rules are, it's what our culture is in our township. That's true. But the best rules are the ones that match the culture. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any new business? Any old business? We gotta get busy. It's business. <laughs> Got a little business going. We gotta give somebody the business. Well, economic development. Get busy out of here. Economic uh, development. Hearing none, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay then. It's done. Um. <laughs> Okay. I move we adjourn. That resolution, the, yeah, the one that you did. I gave you a copy. Are you